All right. In this lesson, we're going to be going from the grams of one substance to the grams of another substance. So if you look here, I've included a flow chart of the process that we're going to be following. And it's got all the intermittent steps labeled with what we need to do. So to start the process off, we're going to start by writing out what we're given. So in this case, we're given 10.3 grams of MgCl2 magnesium chloride. So we're going from grams of magnesium chloride to grams of aluminum chloride. So looking at our flow chart, our first step is to go from grams to moles. So we're going to use the molar mass. So we need the molar mass of magnesium chloride. So let's see, the molar mass of magnesium chloride. Let's see, magnesium, if we looked that up on the periodic table, it's 24.31. And then we have chlorine, we have two of them. So two times, uh, each chlorine is 35.45. So if we add those up, we get 95.21 grams per mole. All right, so to convert our 10.3 grams of magnesium chloride to moles, we need that molar mass. So 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride. Uh, for every one mole of magnesium chloride. Okay, so first step's done. Our units are going to cancel out here. Our next step is to go from moles of magnesium chloride to moles of aluminum chloride. So we're making this jump right here. And for this, we're going to use a mole ratio. So let's see, we have a 3 to 2 ratio. So for every 3 moles, of magnesium chloride, we have two moles of aluminum chloride. Our units of moles of magnesium chloride will now cancel. Our next step, or our final step rather, is to go from moles to grams. And we're, again, we're gonna use that molar mass to make this final jump here. So we need the molar mass of aluminum chloride. Oh, and that should be ALCL3. All right, so let's see. We have aluminum. Aluminum is 26.98. And then we have chlorine. There's actually three of them. I tried to correct that on my problem here. All right, so for chlorine, there are three of them, 35.45. So when we add that all up, I get 133.33 grams per mole. All right, so for every one mole of aluminum chloride, we have 133.33 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, our units of moles of aluminum chloride are going to cancel. And when I multiply this out on my calculator, I get 9.615929. I see three significant figures in our original number. So I need three in my final answer. Going from left to right, I'm going to underline the first three significant digits and then look at the fourth. So in this case, I will round up. This will be 9.62 grams of Al. Cl3 aluminum chloride. And there you go. It's a lot of work, but if you follow that flow chart, all the steps are there. It's just a matter of knowing what to do. Let's do another one. All right. In this example, 
same thing. We're going from grams of O2 to grams of iron oxide. So let's write out what we're given. So we have 6.24 grams of O2. So we're going to go from grams of O2 to moles of O2. And we're going to use that molar mass. So the molar mass of O2. So for oxygen, there's there's two of them, and that's each one is 16. So that one's kind of easy. It's just 32 grams. It's just oxygen by itself. So we have 32 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. So we're going from O2 to iron oxide. So we're going from a ratio, or we have a ratio of three to two. So, so far we can cancel out our grams of O2. Now we need to set up our mole ratio. Our next step is to go from moles of O2 to moles of iron oxide. So for every three moles of O2, we have two moles of iron oxide. All right, so let's see, we can cross out units, uh, mole of o, moles of O2. And then finally, to get to the other side, we need, let's see, for every one mole of iron oxide, we're gonna need the molar mass of iron oxide. It's molar mass of Fe2O3. All right, so let's see, we have iron. Iron is Fe. There's two of them, so two times its molar mass, 55.85. Then we have oxygen. There's three of those. Each one is 16. So let's see, I get 159.7 grams per mole. So 159. 0.7 grams for every one mole. That's Fe2O3. So our units of moles of iron oxide will cancel. And let's see, when I type this into my calculator, I get 20.761. We have three significant figures in our original number. So we need three in our final answer. So let's see, going from left to right. Looking at our fourth number here, we're going to round up to 20.8 grams of iron oxide. All right, let's do one more. So same type of thing. We're going grams to grams. Step number one, write down what we're given. 7.27 grams of NH3. We're gonna go ahead and use the molar mass to convert that to moles of NH3. So let's see, NH3, molar mass of NH3. I have nitrogen. Nitrogen is 14.01. Hydrogen, there's three of them. Each one is 1.01. So let's see, 14.01 plus three times 1.01, I get 17.04 grams per mole. So I get 17.04 grams of NH3 for every one mole of NH3. So I can cross out my units of grams of NH3. Our next step on our flow chart is to use our mole ratio to go from moles of NH3 to moles of water. And we have a ratio of four to six. So there are four moles NH3 to six moles of water. 
So we can cross out moles of NH3. Our final step is to use our molar mass to go from moles of water to grams of water. So we need the molar mass of H2O. So let's see, we've got hydrogen, there's two of them. Each one is 1.01. Oxygen is 16. So I get 18.02 grams per mole. So for every one mole of water, I have 18.02 grams of water. My moles of water will cancel. And I get 11.5321. We have three significant figures in our original number. So we need three in our final answer. Going from left to right, underlining the first three significant digits. Looking at the fourth, we're going to leave this as 11.5 grams of water. There you go. That's how to do grams to grams. Follow the flowchart and you can't go wrong.